we are declaring one soon. <laughs> Monsoon is the vast weather system that comes to India every year. To some, it's the greatest show on earth. Others call it life itself. This film follows its journey across India, from the shores of the Indian Ocean to the foothills of the Himalayas. It all begins in May, when the dry season comes to an end. India's meteorological department in Pune monitors the monsoon's progress across the country hour by hour. In the lagoons of Kerala, the water level has started to rise. The danger mark for the inhabitants has not yet been reached. Like all children in India, Akila has gone back to school. In the western plains of Maharashtra, the monsoon's life-giving rain hasn't come for three years. Man and beast are at the end of their tether. Yet elsewhere, the monsoon is particularly intense. In Mumbai, the situation is becoming critical. The city is on high alert. In Calcutta, the monsoon started, then stopped. We are now waiting for the rain to return. Vishnu Shastri is a bookie. His family comes from Rajasthan. Indians say that Rajasthanis will bet on anything. He's from the driest place in India, but today he's calculating the odds of rain. What do you see? I'm looking at the sky and I am searching for the rain, possibility of rain, but I am looking that there is no any single of any sign of rain today. Today dry day. But Met Office said today is thunder showers. No, no, no chance. Who's right? You Only right. partly cloudy, no chance of any rain. It's my prediction. So have you made your odds? Four to one. You can bet me, four to one. Four to one that it will not rain. No rain. Was the bet 850? It was raised by 500. CBM bet 500. Who bet 200? 250? 100? Go ahead at 750. 100 more. Chester, could you explain how to determine when the bet is over? When it will, when it, the rain is coming and it begins to tripling, these nine tenths all these nine, ten lines are done. Yeah. Then it's, the bet is over. And somebody wins. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Today I think you're going to lose. No chance. I'm so confident that there is no rain today. By late afternoon, the odds have shifted to 40 to 1. Forty to one, forty. No chance of rain. No chance of rain. Forty to one? Yeah. How much? Another hundred? Okay, another hundred. Okay. You're good. Yeah. 
So, but explain to me one thing. Explain, explain the function of, of God in all this. God is Almighty. God is Almighty. There is no explanation for explanation for God. We are the human being. We can give our own explanation. My explanation is my confidence. Nothing else. Uh, I am always keep adamant on my own decision. Yes, you are very confident. Yeah, adamant, always leave adamant on my own decision. I never to and fro change, change the lag, just never happened. But you got, you got I always adamant on my decision. You are very good, you already got me to increase my bet twice now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? The three o'clock deadline passes, and as Shastri has been predicting, there is no rain. After reaching the south of India, the monsoon moved on to the Bay of Bengal and has now reached Calcutta. But once it has covered the whole region, it doesn't bring rain every day. The monsoon is unpredictable. Meteorologists talk about pulsations, an alternation of active phases with heavy rainfall and pauses of varying degrees during which the rains stop for a week, sometimes even for 10 to 30 days. These seasonal variations are very hard to predict for gamblers and scientists alike. It's been two months since the monsoon's onset, and this place should be underwater by now. Kazaranga Park is situated on the floodplain of the Brahmaputra River, named after Brahma, the Hindu creator. But Assam is rain deficient so far this year. Utam Saikia is the honorary wildlife warden at Kazaranga, and he really needs it to rain. Uh, this is the southern direction of Kajiranga National Park. These are the cloud, monsoon cloud. They are coming towards the north and hit the back to the Himalayan range. And then rain start. And after the rains, the Brahmaputra Valley flood. Kaziranga is a UNESCO World Heritage Site chosen for its biodiversity. It relies on the annual Brahmaputra flood to recharge the grasslands that are home to some of the world's most endangered species. Take care, take care. Oh, bula, 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 bula. Here, here, here. Yes, oh, come on, okay, dear, okay, dear, okay, dear. Mughal says, I'm very much scared about, um, maybe he can size us. We don't have the guard with us. So we need to blank fire out any, make to any metallic sound. Otherwise, he will come again. It's a very innocent animal. What do you think when you're standing here listening to the, all these sounds? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about the uh, safeguard of these cases, the innocent rhino. They are uh, now in the trouble. So that's why I'm thinking about how to give the safeguard of this rhino. The flood may create life, but it also puts the animals' lives in danger, forcing them to flee to higher ground where poachers await them. Just across the border in China, a single rhinoceros horn ground up and sold as an aphrodisiac is worth over $100,000. The stakes are high. In Kazaranga, the park rangers shoot to kill. 
They're coming from the North Bank. They're fully prepared and armed. They've been seen in the area. We all need to keep an eye on the river. Anything can happen, especially during the flood. Hello? Hello? That's exactly right. Boudoir won the race. Shastri had a bad day at the racetrack yesterday. And people are calling to settle their accounts. I know, you bet and won 17,500. Yesterday you bet 200,000. No, there's no bigger thing than my reputation. In life, nothing is more important than my reputation. Okay, I'll make a packet with 270,000 for you. You can come pick it up. The back was bad. Net of 25 pesos. 10,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if it doesn't rain, you're going to lose a lot of money on that bed, eh? Yeah. But the rain comes at last, and with it, good fortune for Shastri. The monsoon finally hit Assam too, and the Brahmaputra flooded, although not badly. Last year, this entire village was underwater. But it wasn't enough to renew the floodplain. Utang is on the lookout for migrating animals. Now is the time they're most vulnerable. Do all the creatures, do all the animals migrate when the park floods? Yeah, most of the animals. They believe that they will take shelter in that hill area. So they used to go towards the hill, Kirby are long hills.
There are only 3,000 wild rhinoceri left in India, half of them in Kazaranga. As they leave the park seeking higher ground, they become the target of international crime syndicates and the tribal villagers they employ. More than 300 active posas is now walking around the Kajiranga National Park. This is the photographs of the posters uh, captured by the camera trap in the animal corridor. The numbers of posters is coming uh, in these photographs, you see, with the weapon. We get the information of where, wh what type of weapon they are using, what is the cloth they are using. From this, their uh, costume and uh, uh, walking style, we can come to know that uh, from which type they are. And these photographs, you see one uh, handcuff in his hand. He managed to escape from the forest department, forest guard. It's not just the poachers. To get to high ground, the animals have to cross one of the busiest trucking arteries in Assam. Utam has received word of a rhino and calf trying to cross. Where are we going? We are going to National Highway because the animal is migrating towards Karbi along hills. So we have to give the safe passes for those wild animals. Otherwise, the traffic will hit and kill the animal in National Highway 37. Kerala has received record rainfall since the monsoon onset. Water levels throughout the backwaters are rising steadily. And the levees are barely holding.
Word about the danger to the levee quickly spreads. Nobody's home is safe now. I'm taking my mother and my children to my sister's house. Then I need to get home to protect everything from the water. I'm afraid my house is going to be washed away. It's not just Aquila's family. The levees ruptured throughout the backwaters last night, leaving 30,000 people homeless. These people are taking their children to live with their relatives. Some of them will never return home. Dharavi in Mumbai is one of the largest slums in the world. It's home to over a million people. Some of them have been here for generations. Others have arrived recently from villages like Aquila's. The Met Office has issued a severe weather warning and asked people to stay home. But today, is the festival of the warrior goddess Durga. People here look to her for protection. Blood sacrifice is in the air. A girl with a club foot prostrates herself on the rain-soaked pavement. A man carries a headless chicken. are being led to slaughter.
There seems to be a kind of elemental connection that binds these people together in a chaotic universe. Megalaya, the place of the clouds. This is the end of the journey for the monsoon, where the clouds come to die. The Hindu gods are said to live just to the north of here in the Himalayas. The mountains and the plateau of Tibet are two of the key driving forces of the monsoon. Their mass sends waves of heat into the atmosphere that trigger the monsoon and keep it going. During its journey over the warm waters of the Bay of Bengal, the monsoon picks up water vapor. Then it surges into the deltas of the Ganges and the Brahmaputra. This flow of humid air is blocked to the north by the Himalayas and to the east by the mountains of Burma. Huge cloud formations then gather over the mountains, releasing torrential rains. The northeast of India is the wettest region during the monsoon. The high plateau of Cherrapunji has record quantities of rain. This is where the monsoon meets the barrier of the Himalayas. If monsoon is the soul of India, Cherrapunji is its spiritual capital. Every Indian schoolchild knows that this is the rainiest place on earth, with over 10 meters of rain during a typical monsoon season. For over a century, a Met Office employee here has been dutifully recording atmospheric conditions and sending them to headquarters in triplicate, giving a semblance of order and meaning to a phenomenon that's anything but. Under British colonial rule, the Cherrapunji Met Office was considered a hardship posting, the constant rain proving too much for even the English. It drove many of them to drink and worse. When the British were here, yes. during Raj period, yes. this was, they called this the suicide posting. <laughs> it might be, sir. <clears throat> because at that time, so I think this, this area is most isolated place, I think, at that, at that time.
The legendary reigns of Cherrapunji are a strange, unique spectacle. Seeing it is like being witness to creation. It gives one a feeling of mystery and awe. But mystery and awe give way to an overwhelming sense of creation's indifference to life. It still hasn't rained here. That's four years in a row the monsoon has failed these farmers. Their wells are dry and hope is fading fast. For some, there's only one way out. <laughs> He has a six acre farm here. It's totally burnt. All plants are burnt. Just because of no monsoon. Both of his uh, colleagues has to be migrated. Because they don't, he, he can't give him them uh, work. And there is no water. There were some suicides in another taluka, just adjacent to this taluka, just uh, because of uh, loan on them. And it's uh, increasing each day. And that's why, because of no rain, the suicides. We return to the backwaters one last time. Akila and her sister are back. They prefer living here with 12 other families crowded into the one house not destroyed by the flood to living in the city. Akila's father leads us to his ruined house. It's as though he needs someone to witness the scale of his loss.
I was really scared. I didn't know what to do. We couldn't move to another place. My husband said everybody should leave the main house. It's very comfortable living here. But it's difficult during this season. It's a good place for normal people, though. I want to leave this place. I'm scared to stay here. I want to move to another place, build my own home, and take my parents with me. That's a good hope. Thank you. The monsoon comes to India every year, like some ancient god destroying and creating life. The floodwaters will recede, rice will grow, people will rebuild and prepare for next year. There's total quietness all around. A sense of tranquility. Something more than just ordinary peace, which means a lack of sound. It's not that. There's a serenity in the whole scenario. It takes you out of this world, somewhere else. But every cloud has its own shade of grey. There are black clouds, there are white clouds. There are clouds of different thickness. Clouds which scare you but don't give you rain. Clouds which look benign but give you a lot of rain. It's a moment I cherish. Something to preserve and remember. <laughs> 